This is the new Canon C300 Mark III. The Cinema 5D Virtual Show is brought to you by b &H, the professional source for all your video needs. CVP, the leading specialist in creative cine, video and photo solutions. Tilta, arm your camera. Nanlite, professional lighting solution. And Manfrotto, imagine more. Welcome everybody to the Cinema 5D virtual show. I'm here with Canon who just announced the C300 Mark III. I'm here with Paul Atkinson. How are you? I'm good, thank you. And you? Very well. Here in quarantine here in Vienna, Austria, and I guess you're in the UK? Yeah, yeah, about 50 kilometers north of London in the same sort of situation. So. Yeah, so we appreciate that uh, you're still, you know, Canon still announced an amazing new product despite the circumstances, uh, because at, at one point the situation will be better for all of us and so we can actually use the shiny new tools that we have here. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you just announced the C300 Mark III, mm -hmm. uh, which looks very much like the C500 Mark II. What can you tell me about this camera? What's what's new compared to the C300 Mark II? So the major difference is the, the new camera is a super 35 millimeter sensor, um, which is a new technology called uh, dual gate output. Um, the main difference is an improvement in low light performance, uh, an extended dynamic range uh, in excess of 16 stops, um, the ability to do 4K 120p in RAW or XFAVC, um, but it, can, it retains the modular design that we've uh, introduced on the C500 Mark II, which means the camera can be expanded with different expansion modules and the user-changeable lens mount. All right, are there any other differences to the C500 Mark II? Um, the, the major difference really is in the codec options, um, apart from the cinema raw lights that we also have on the 500 Mark II and the C200. Uh, we have XFAVC, uh, which is available in all eye or long op options, and then also the ability to record proxies uh, across both settings. All right, let's take a closer look at all this a little bit later on. So who is the typical target user for this camera? The camera, I think, is going to fit in a fairly wide range of applications, everything from sort of mainstream cinema that want the look of the Super 35mm, right the way through to broadcast, documentary, um, independent movies, just the whole range, really, of, of professional applications that want the cinema look. Well, a lot of people, uh, I'm sure, are surprised that it you know, looks the same as a C500 Mark II, which is its, more, its bigger and more expensive full-frame sibling. Yep. Why did you decide to do the same form factor again? The form factor on the C500 Mark II has actually proved to be really popular, and even things like the, the optional um, viewfinder, plus the ability to put the expansion modules on, which means that you can add connectivity without losing anything um, over the camera. So this whole concept of making the camera work the way you want it, you've got the, uh, the expansion union 2 there, um, which adds a whole load of functionality to the camera. Uh, so we kept that going because then the, the uh, accessories are compatible. So that the accessories for the 500 Mark II will fit on the new camera as well. Uh, let's talk about the sensor. You already mentioned uh, mm. the new technology. The, it's called dual gain uh, output. Yeah. Um, but first of all, I mean, let, let's 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 look at the C500 Mark II, which has a full frame sensor, and this mm. one, which has a super 35 millimeter sensor. So yeah. uh, you already mentioned that it has uh, this new technology. Um, is it a completely new sensor? Yes, it is. It's a completely new sensor that's designed and uh, made by Canon for Canon. Uh, and it, this is the first camera that this sensor has been included in. Well, what's the native ISO? Uh, for native ISO for Log2 is the same as a lot of the other sensors, whereas it's 800 ISO. So the C300 Mark III also features a new technology on the sensor, which is, uh, in my opinion, probably the most impressive innovation uh, compared to the C500 Mark II, which is called the Dual Gain Output, DGO. Uh, is yeah. that like a dual ISO from other manufacturers or what is it? 
It works in a different way to dual ISO. So the way that DGO is working is the image is being uh, looked at and then imaged with um, one amplification on the game being done for highlights and one for shadow. And this is then combined uh, to give you that single image to give you the, the wider dynamic range. And this is all happening on the sensor. So before it even gets into the, into the processor, you've got that image that is ready to go through and then become uh, part of a HDR workflow, for instance. It gives you quite a few other benefits as well. Um, it gives you an extended dynamic range uh, in excess of 16 stops, um, but also with a lower noise in the shadows. Uh, and as a nice advantage as well is, I mean, we've always been known for our low light performance uh, in our Cinema EOS range, uh, so you'll get lower noise as well. The major difference is that DGO will work at any ISO that you set to give you that same effect. Um, obviously, as you go to higher ISOs, you would expect higher noise, but you will not get that um, uh, amplified noise, if you like, that would be caused by something being done through the processor. So all in all, it just makes it a much cleaner image, makes it much easier for grading and for post-production. Okay, interesting. But it is always on. It's always on. So up to 60p, um, DGO is active. And then once you go into the higher frame rates, it becomes inactive. And, and the dual gain output is the reason why Canon says there is one stop more in dynamic range compared to the that's C500 correct. Yes. Mark II? It's, it's that extra uh, amplification that's happening that gives us that extra um, in excess of one stop. Um, I mean, this is the first Canon cinema camera to uh, which is able to record 120 frames per second in 4K using the full sensor width. This has been something probably one of the biggest uh, criticisms of Canon uh, cinema cameras in the past few years compared to the competitors, that it was not possible to record really high uh, frame rates using the full sensor width. Um, now, of course, you have a lot of, I mean, the C500 Mark II proves to be a very, very popular camera as well. But it still has that downside. Are there any? And and now you have the new camera, which is probably going to be less expensive. We're going to talk about the price at the end. Uh, you think there are any plans to you know enable higher frame rates also with the C500 Mark II, or is this not possible? Um, I'm not entirely sure that that would be possible. This is a new sensor, and it's the combination of the new sensor with the Digic DV7 processor um, that's allowing us to get that extra bit of uh, of. of high frame rate at the full frame setting and that's available in cinema raw light as well as xf avc um, so i'm not entirely sure that we'll be able to go down the route of sort of a retrospective fix if you like because i think it's more of a hardware thing so you can do 120 up to 120 frames in 4k uh, yeah. if we switch to a crop mode um, mm -hmm. how high can it go um, we can go down to the Super 16mm 2K crop mode and we can go up to 180 frames a second then. Uh, one question that also came up, uh, because I've already fiddled a little bit with the camera, we have it for a couple of days. Of course, it's in the pre-release mm -hmm. firmware, uh, yeah. but it, it honestly feels quite final already. I didn't find any bugs yet, <laughs> good, but uh, we're still, you know, <laughs> still working with it. Um, but uh, in terms of the RAW, it, it, you said it's, it's again the cinema RAW light that's already yeah. been used in the C200. Uh, mm -hmm. the C500 Mark II. Um, what is the difference between the RAW that is uh, implemented in the recently announced 1DX Mark III and, and the cinema mm -hmm. right, uh, RAW light? The way that the RAW is produced is slightly different in the two cameras. So with the 1DX Mark III, um, it is a very similar sort of RAW that is set um, to automatically to Canon Log 3. Um, with the cinema raw light that we're using in this camera, we would go to cinema uh, to a uh, bigger button to Canon Log Two. Um, they are quite interchangeable, um, so you could use the One DX Three quite successfully as a B camera or crash cam uh, in a production for the either of the, the new the newer cameras. Really, that's an expensive crash cam. It, yes, it is, but at the end of the day, you know, as long as the memory card survives, <laughs> depends on the budget. Yeah, yeah true, 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 true. Yeah. Um, another thing, Codex. Uh, I think this is the first camera that also has not only X A uh, XF AVC All Eye, but also XF AVC Long Gop Codex. Yeah, that's correct. That's uh, right. And also a proxy codec, right? Yeah. Uh, so apart from the Cinema Raw Light um, option, XF AVC, as you correctly said, in All Eye or Long Gop, and this has been done really to increase the versatility. So with the all eye where every frame is, is um, coded, if you like, um, each time, 
we have a lower compression and therefore a higher data rate. And for people who don't want to shoot RAW, and there's still quite a lot of people who wouldn't want to shoot RAW for technical or financial reasons, um, it gives them the, the, up to the optimum of, of image quality and file size. But there are going to be times where you need a quicker turnaround, so the long op uh, would be ideal for them. So this is things like news feature who need to get footage back to a newsroom or back to a studio, etc., more quickly. Um, as far as the proxies are concerned, yes, we are now able to do proxies not only for raw recording, but also for XFAVC, and that's recorded to the SD card. Um, let's talk about simultaneous recording, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what is possible? I mean, we have two um, CF Express card slots mm -hmm. in there, plus an SD card slot. Yeah. Um, CF Express is, is certainly the latest and fastest available standard. Um, and finally, cards are getting more available these days yeah. uh, and uh, also less expensive, luckily. Um, but what is possible? What can I record simultaneously on the two card slots? So you can record um, two lots of RAW simultaneously or Relay uh, or two lots of XFAVC. Uh, and again, either uh, flavor of all I or long got simultaneously, uh, plus the, the proxies to the SD card. Are there any limitations if I, I switch to the fast, like the slow motion stuff, the high speed record? No, um, you'll record exactly the same proxy as you will do. Uh, so whatever your, your main recording set it is, that'll be recorded to, to all three cars if that's how you've set the camera up. Let's mention some of the things that are already part of the C500 Mark II, uh, mm -hmm. which is the dual pixel autofocus. Um, so this, uh, again, is... I. I firmly believe one of the most effective uh, autofocus systems on any camera from any one. Um, it's covering 80% um, vertically and horizontally of the sensor, exactly the same as the, the other cameras. On the C500 Mark II, we did change slightly the way that it works. So one of the reasons that autofocus sometimes isn't liked um, by a lot of users is the fact that it's very linear. It's out of focus, it's in focus. So what we did on the C500 Mark II is we introduced a slight change to the way that that system works. Um, and that was done so that it emulates the way a focus puller works. So the focus puller will start off quickly, will then smooth out the action, and then just before focus is achieved, they'll slow it down. And so this camera, as well as the C500 Mark II, bring that in. If you don't want to use the autofocus system, then it does also include the um, dual pixel focus uh, manual focus guide, which gives you that nice little simple GUI to tell you which way to turn the lens and then brings it into focus if you're using manual focus. And the nice thing is that if you're using uh, a Canon Cine Prime lens, for instance, um, with the EF mount, you've still got the electronics, although you won't get autofocus anyway, you will still have that functionality of being able to use that system with the Cine Prime lens. Interesting. And, uh, and I believe it was also, as you mentioned, enhanced with the C500 Mark II, because I mean, the dual pixel autofocus has been around for a couple of years, uh, but it's yeah. been continuously made better. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's just with each sort of, uh, as we progress on, we're able to bring in improvements to it. Um, and that, that both systems actually, that the dual pixel autofocus, when people actually start using it and they realize that they can trust it, uh, that, that's the important thing is that it's a focus system that you can trust. And for a single shooter, for a documentary shooter that you know we would hope would be using these cameras, it's going to be invaluable uh, because it, it makes sure that that shot is as sharp as it needs to be for today's production values. Uh, are there any limitations in where it works? Like, could it does it work in RAW? Uh, it works in RAW. It'll work in the, uh, the higher frame rates. The only limitation you will get is if you close your aperture down lower than f13 uh, or equivalent in t-stop. Um, and then because the, the, the light, it still needs some contrast to work, but that's pretty much the only limitation. Electronic stabilization. This is also mm -hmm. something that the C500 uh, Mark II has. Uh, yep. Is this also in this camera? Yes, it is. So it's exactly the same system. Um, it's almost like a hybrid system. So you activate it if you want it. It's not on all the time. Most of our lenses, especially if the photo lenses are being used, are optically stabilized. And a lot of people find that that's enough. Sometimes it isn't. So then the camera, you can switch on the um, electronic stabilization within the camera, and that will give you a total of five axis of stabilization. Now, the nice thing is that if you were to put on, again, a cinema prime lens on the EF mount, um, 
you will get the focal length information so you can then use the automatic the electronic system i beg your pardon it'll automatically pick up the uh, the focal length of the lens and correct accordingly if you're using uh, a pl mount lens however there's no contacts to tell you the focal length so then you go into the menu and you can select and store that focal length so then you'll get the full five stops of, of image uh, beg your pardon five axis image stabilization within the camera as well and it will also work in anamorphic in four axis yeah what well, let, let's move on to Pricing and availability. I mean, the okay. the C five hundred Mark II was already quite a surprise in terms of pricing compared to the C three hundred Mark II, which was basically the same price as the C five hundred Mark II. So, what are we looking at here? So, our target price on this on release is around about ten thousand euros, uh, excluding tax uh, and availability. We're looking at the end of June. Very nice. I, I'm sure this will be a very popular camera. I'm looking forward to trying it out a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your time, Paul. No problem. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Stay tuned to Cinema 5D's YouTube channel and our website for more uh, news about new products and our virtual show, which is essentially our replacement for NAB. We'll also have another video with Paul talking about their new um, servo Zoom, the 25-250. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.